Hey guys, good afternoon. Welcome. To, well, it's today's the 20th of August, 2020. It's crazy. Uh, again, this time goes by so fast, even during the stupid COVID where we're losing ourselves and we're denying ourselves because of what people expect out of us and what the government expects. And we're wasting away. And we should be growing in the Lord. It's a beautiful sunny day here on the East Coast in southern New Jersey. It's a very beautiful day. Right now, it's like 75 degrees going up to a high of 82. I mean, I couldn't ask for better than that on a hot August day. Not real hot like it's been, even though it's, we're going to have more heat next week. We rejoice. We, we're blessed when God gives us. We're, where we live in this part of the country, we get weeks in the spring and fall that are beautiful weather like san francisco and then the rest of the year it's you know hot or cold so we're grateful to god and 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 i'm do want to say talking about jesus that we need to be grateful to god about what he blesses us with let's be grateful to god amen let's um turn your bible or your device back to Mark chapter 8, where we were yesterday. And um, again, we said some really neat things in the life of Jesus, didn't we? The life of Jesus. Uh, we saw yesterday, if you're with us, and again, you could always go back and review these things because we're going through the gospel mark real fast this is accelerated christian growth we call this we go through the gospel real fast we saw jesus feeding four thousand people and then we saw the pharisees demanding a sign and now we come to those religious leaders again jesus was just talking about it says in verse 14 mark chapter 8 he says now they had forgotten to take bread, and they only had one loaf of them in the boat. And Jesus cautioned them, saying, Watch out, beware of the leaven of Pharisees and Herod. Now, again, we read that yesterday. But now it says, and they did, began discussing one another the fact that they had no bread. And Jesus, aware of them, said, Why are you discussing like you have no bread? Don't you perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? What's the matter with you? I'm not talking about bread. I'm saying the yeast of the Pharisees and Herod. Having eyes to see you don't see and having ears to hear you don't hear and you don't remember when I broke the five loaves of the 5,000, how many baskets did you take up? And they said 12 and seven for the 4,000. How many full baskets did you pick up? And they said seven. And so he said to them, don't you still understand? Like, can you wake up? What's the matter with you guys? And they came to Bethesda, and then he healed the blind man, if you remember. And then they made the question, The G Peter, when he was asked, who does Jesus say I am? He said, you're the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And we're actually in verse 31, and that's where, with that quick review. Verse 31, and he began to teach them right after Peter realized by God that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. So Jesus from that point started saying, that's going to be it. I'm going to Jerusalem. I'm going to die. The elders, that which is the Sanhedrin and the chief priests and the scribes, the teachers of the Torah, they're going to put me to death and I'm going to rise on the third day. He told them that. Now, as many times as he told them, you would think that they'd be ready for that. But that's when he began to tell them right there in chapter 8 and verse 31. Verse 32 says, and he said to them plainly, he told them, I'm going to die in Jerusalem. And so, Peter, it says, took him aside in verse 32 and began rebuking him. But turning to see his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, 
for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but the things of man. Peter said, no, it'll never happen. But see, Jesus knew the purpose he came. The purpose. John the Apostle, who was here when this happened, said when he was an old man, in 1 John chapter 1, he said, for this purpose was the Son of God manifest. Was he revealed? The purpose he came, to destroy the works of the evil one. That's why he came. To destroy the works of the devil. To destroy what Satan done, did in the garden and man falling. That's why Jesus came. So his mission was to come to die for the sins of man. It was always his purpose. And when Peter rebuked him, said, not going to happen, no way. Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. You're thinking about the things of man, not the things of God. And calling the crowd to himself with his disciples, he said, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now, right after Jesus said, I'm going to my death, he said, Anyone who's to follow me, take up your cross and come after me. And taking up your cross in that culture didn't mean wearing a gold cross around your neck or some kind of monument. A cross was a symbol in Jesus' culture of capital punishment. Like somebody ha ca carrying a noose for hanging someone, or a, a needle for a lethal injection, or an electric chair. It was the same thing. So if you saw somebody carrying a cross in Jesus' day, that meant they were carrying it to some place where the Roman soldiers were going to nail them to it. So what Jesus is saying, if you want to come after him, you want to follow him, you need to die to yourself. You die to yourself in your own wants. And you become alive to him. That's where the power in Christianity is at. Is following after him, denying yourself. Whoever would come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross, Jesus said, and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But Whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. When you give your life to God, you say that's the only way to have real life. And then he continued in verse 36, For what does it profit a man to gain the world and forfeit his soul? And that, that's a good question. What does it? Listen, you think about the people who lived, the most rich people who ever lived in either modern history, like Rockefeller, or back in ancient history, whoever, whoever you want to think of, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Darius, king of Persia, the people who were the biggest dollar people. Well, what does it profit a man to gain the world and forfeit his soul? That's a question to ask. What good is it? What good's it going to do you? Your money doesn't do you any good in eternity. So what does it do you, really? Honestly, think about that. What profit a person to gain the whole world and forfeit their soul? Think about that. For what can a man give in return for a soul? Now, when we talk about, Jesus talking about the soul, you know, man's made of three parts... We have the body, soul, which is our mind, will, and emotions, something you can't see. And we have a spirit that's creating the image of God. Three parts, every person. Three, body, soul, spirit. And so, Jesus, your soul, your mind, will, and emotions, what can you give in exchange for that? You see, we have to have our soul given to him and he has to recreate it and work on it. That takes the rest of your life. My mind, will, and emotions are still messed up. I've been a Christian longer than I've been a non-believer. I became a Christian when I was 23. I'm 60 now. And it still takes out all the things that I got in me till I was 23 and some of the things after. God has to root out of my heart. And he will. And he does. But again, what can you give in exchange, really, 
for your soul. For whoever is ashamed of me, Jesus said, and of my words, in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. If you're ashamed of Jesus, Jesus, the one who died on the cross, you're ashamed of him. He says he's going to be ashamed of you. You don't want that. I don't want that. We want to honor him. You want to honor him. Let's honor him today. Let's serve him with all of our heart. Let's plan now to live for him, to serve him, to die to ourselves and be alive to Jesus. Again, what's it going to profit you if you gain the whole world? Yeah, you get your house, your mansion, and your boats, and your vacation homes, and your unlimited air travel, travel all over the world. What, what profit is it when you gain the whole world? and lose your own soul. What profit is there? The answer is obvious. None. That's the profit. None. Come to Jesus. Live for him. Live for Jesus. Give everything to live for him. Now let's pray. And we're going to pray against the coronavirus. And right now, and as I meant to remind you every day again at 9 p.m., whatever you're doing, drop what you're doing and pray for one, two, three, 10, 15, 20, half hour, an hour, whatever you want to pray. There's no time that we recommend. It's whatever you lead you. <coughs> Sorry. With a nice day like today, come some pollen. So anyway, Let's pray against coronavirus. Let's pray that God will deliver us. And let's pray for healings for people that need them right now. Why don't you join me? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you and we ask you, Lord, that you will bless us. That you would heal our land, Lord. That you would please, please, Lord, intervene on behalf of your people on this earth, Lord, to take away this COVID-19, Lord, that plagues our society. We thank you what you're doing now with the um, herd resistance and so forth, but we ask you to completely destroy it in the name of Jesus, your son, Lord. As we choose to take up our crosses and follow after him, we ask you, Lord, to take this thing out of here, take this plague away, and prepare us, Lord, for the horrible things that are about to come on the face of this earth. Count us worthy to be raptured out of here. We thank you, Jesus, and we praise you. In your name, we pray, Lord Jesus, and we love you. Lord, we lift up anyone suffering, that you would touch them, help them, heal them completely from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, and help us to walk in your agape love. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. And again, thank you for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow at noon. Um, and um, getting ready for our exciting weekend and the Lord's Day here at Gateway. Join us. Plan now on being here. And we'll see you on the morrow. Until we do, may God's richest and blessed be yours.